Yes. I was saying that um, from my experience, like the past years, that I've seen that Subhanallah. I mean, there is people that something developed in their heart, which is because of the media and what's going on, and politically and environmentally and everything. That they like they become like they are like they, they are like now like working in just a place, earning money, just making a living. And they have fear to go to the mosque, pray, and and like you feel that they are like you know like there's a chains around them, mm -hmm. and they are locked up, and uh, they are like pretty much like traumatized. And then at the same like at the same time like in, like the, the opposite picture, which is you find people coming from, uh, for example, Pakistan, Bangladesh, and all, like other countries. They are facing the immigration, they are facing the borders, they are coming to the country, but they have in their heart something different, totally different than the, than the, than the, than the one that I was talking about. Mm -hmm. They have the love of Allah mm -hmm. they have the courage, uh -huh. they, I mean, they are wearing the clothes, they have the beard, they are wearing the turban, and they come and they talk to the people about Allah and they change people, they change people mentality, they change people they release all these knots that they have. They, they, they change people the way that they, they think and the way that they talk. And they, they change the people psychology in just a second by just talking to them about Allah. So, subhanAllah, I mean, do you have any comment about that? I mean, why, I mean, or, or like what we should do? What's the best way to approach someone who is in that position, who is have fear? And, like well, you know, part of what I've been saying all day, and I'll repeat that, is um, we're all traumatized. I mean, I, I don't think I've I met I mean very I, I don't think I've met anyone. I mean, to be honest, I don't meet people who are not. And yes, we all have bad experiences, and we have degrees of overcoming them. Degrees in which we've overcoming overcome them and renegotiated those traumas. But I may meet very few people, to be honest. I don't mean to, I'm not belittling anybody. I just say, to be honest, I, I meet very few people who are really completely free of trauma and free in themselves where their vitality and they're really, uh, I mean, experientially close to Allah at every moment. So we all suffer from the same thing. And, and you know, uh, you know uh, Allah says he that he does not change the condition of people and change, they change what's inside them. So we all have to look to ourselves. We all have to look to our own healing. Like I said, one of the gifts I discovered in trying to help people with trauma was discovering that I was traumatized myself. You know? And we have to begin with ourselves. And we really have to really believe or question how full we are and how fulfilled we are and how honest we are with ourselves. Most people don't know what it means to be honest with oneself. Sidq, sincerity. You know, that means you're really present and you're in recognition of what you're feeling at all time. I tell you, for most people, when you come back, if you spend some time in recovering sensation, you start coming back into the realm of feeling that was there when you were a child. But now you're an, an adult. And so it's a hard journey because it hurts. Because part of what you experience is pain and deep grief and sorrow. And the grief, one of the griefs, one of the grievings that people do is the grieving of their being absent from themselves and being disloyal and dishonest with themselves and betraying themselves for so many years. That's not an easy one to understand unless you find and make that journey in which you begin to become honest with yourself. In, from an Islamic point of view, we know ourselves from our, each other. We know ourselves from each other. The, mirror, the mu'min is a mirror to the mu'min. We need each other to know who we are. The more we're disconnected from each other, the more we can live in fantasy worlds and places of denial. One Sheikh in Morocco said, this is one of, the, one of the secret gifts in Islam, that the men are required to pray together. The women are free to pray alone. And part of it's to aid them in their menstrual cycles, etc., etc. But he said another hidden benefit of it is that the women, they don't need reflection with each other as much as you men do. You men move into the denial for so much, too easily. We all say, I'm fine. I'm happy. What's wrong with me? It's all somebody else, or it's her, or them. 
But remember that the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, was someone who when he came, and we cannot be as he was completely, but we can use him as a model. He came, and one person, he changed the entire planet in his lifetime, or in less than a lifetime, just a short time. We don't believe we can do anything at some level. We've been beaten down. We are in chains. We can't do anything. It's the media. Oh, it's this. It's the school. Yeah, okay. All those things, are but what do we do? How do we transform ourselves and the world? One sheikh said to me, he said, yeah, when you're young, you want to save the world. He said, well, of course. That's the only logical thing to want to do as a human being. It's yourself that you're saving. And in the end, the only one we can save is ourselves. That's the only one we can save is ourself. My, sheikh, my teacher in Pakistan said, okay, you're going to do medicine. Don't think you're going to help people and save them. You know, No, you are the one that's going to be healed by them, inshallah. They are your teachers, each one that comes to you. And he didn't mean it romantically. He meant it practically speaking. You are the one that needs healing. And your service to them is part of your healing. And that which they bring to you, if you have any humility, will enlighten you to knowledge of yourself. And they will reflect to you the truth. So we men don't listen. We don't know how to listen. We try to fix everything. I tell men, okay, you have problems at home with your wife. Listen to her. Parents, you have trouble with your children. Listen to them. Just listen to them. Don't try to do anything and don't try to fix it. Don't try to come in with explanations and ideas and concepts that explain what they're expressing. Just listen and feel what's being said. Most of us are not able to feel what's being said. And I promise you, if you get to a place, like I say, feeling is no less of a, of a spectrum of awesome beauty than the creation is, with all of its maj majesty and all of its beauty. It's no less than that. But you have to stop for a moment and be with it. And like I say, as silly as it looks, come back to your senses and begin to feel. So I'd say, tell men, when something happens, be with it. Just sit with it. Notice what happens in your body. Do you feel anything? Most men don't feel anything. I work with couples, and the couples get into discussions, and something happens, and I say, well, okay, what do you feel that's happening here? You know, to, I say to the, man, what, to, the, to the male, I say, so what do you feel about what she just said? And he said, well, I feel like I need to do something. I'm like, yeah, I feel like I'm, I've got to change. And he thinks he's being a good, responsible person by saying that. And he is from an intellectual point of view, but in other words, you know, I said, no, what are you feeling? Feeling, you know, you know feeling, you know what that is? No. Doesn't have a clue. I feel like I want to make you happy. I feel like I want to change and make something better. I feel like I want, I want to fix it. I feel, or something more defensive. I feel like uh, anything I do, uh, it's not right. Etc. Cetera, Etc. Cetera. So we've shut down this whole subtle spectrum of feelings, and when we bring that back, we come back to life. But it's not an easy task. But it's a task that takes us to, inevitably, to brilliance. Because we think with our whole body and our whole being. And we see and we understand with our whole being, not otherwise. I, I was telling people, I, may, I, I use Buster Rhymes. Anybody who, how many of you know Buster Rhymes? Good. Actually, people do know him. You know? Only reason I use it as an example is that I use many, I use a lot of performers as examples. Now, whatever may go on in, with him as a personality, whatever he's gone on through his life, when he performs, anybody seen him perform in li live ever? Videos? Now, there's a man, right? Is that not an example of someone that when he does something, his whole, <laughs> his whole being takes part, right? I mean, he's there, man, totally. But so energetically and vividly there, I watched him and I was so fascinated. I thought, wow, what's up with this guy? And so I begin to reflect on it because of my fascination and I begin to realize that it, it, what it is, it's a moment of being totally present with what he's feeling and expressing it with his whole body from the tip of his toes to his gold, you know, his metal covered teeth or whatever it is, you know, <laughs> and his voice, you know, that voice he has, totally, fully expressing. And yeah, we, I mean, there may be all kinds. He may go out and shoot somebody. Astaghfirullah. But I'm just saying, it's an example of that. So 
this is what being alive is about, being totally present and being alive. And using, you know, coming back to our senses, being totally present. And that enables us to think, to see, to understand, to help, to assist, to be alive, and to be as the Prophet ﷺ was, which is a total human being, with all of our parts taking part. So that's, in essence, what I... <laughs> the principles of hikmah are, okay? So I think that's it. Right? Alhamdulillah. Thank you all for being so patient and listening. I hope it wasn't... Uh, please forgive me if I've said anything that offended anyone. Uh, forgive me if I bored you. Forgive me if uh, I pres make presumptions of any kind. And please, inshallah, I hope that uh, you know, it's of some use to you, inshallah. So, uh, Ya Allah, Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammadin abdika wa rasulika nabi ilmi wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam tasliman. Adada qalqika warida nafsika wa zanata arshika wa madadi kalimatik. Ya Allah, I ask for blessings on this gathering. I ask Allah that you give us strength and courage to heal ourselves. I ask Allah that you give us guidance and show us how we find the means by which we heal ourselves and the people around us. Allah, give us the strength and the courage and the knowledge that we need to heal the world and the things that we see around us that need attention so dearly and to help the people that are suffering and that are in pain and that we give, they give us knowledge and the means to connect with each other in a real way that has been lost amongst us and bring us back together as brothers and sisters in a real way and show us the, the wisdom we need to do that in all instances and in many places, inshallah. Subhana rabbika rabbil izzati amma yasifun wa salaman ar mursaleen wa alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen.